Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Hi. House calls. Welcome. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to house calls. Um, interestingly, <clears throat> yesterday, um, interestingly, yesterday, I was um, confused about what day it was. I kept saying, oh, Tuesday or Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. I missed my virtual training appointment yesterday, which was kind of saddened me a little bit because I kept thinking it was Tuesday. I don't know why. But anyways, happy Thursday, everybody. <laughs> I am positive it's Thursday. So happy Thursday. Um, I can't believe uh, it is actually just starting to be actually feel like really like spring where I am. So hopefully you guys are having uh, good weather where you are and it's a good Thursday. So happy Thursday. So today um, on House Calls, we are going to be going um, all the way to Palm Springs. We're going to be chatting with Mr. Palm Springs, Mr. Modern, uh, a good friend of mine, Christopher Kennedy, who um, I'm sure you know who he is. And if you do not, you're going to be delighted. He's a great guy. Um, he's a uh, really interesting designer because he is so focused um, in Palm Springs, in California, um, he does an event called Modernism uh, that he's very involved with, and he does a show house there every year that's really cool. So um, we're going to talk to him a little bit about that and what's going on in Palm Springs and California and all that good stuff. So let me just see if Christopher Kennedy, Mr. Modern, where is he? There, let's see if he's out and about. There he is. Um, okay, let's get sound. Uh, he's on. Sound is good. Yay! All righty, so uh, waiting for Mr. Christopher Kennedy, um, and I'm really excited to, I feel like I'm going to Palm Springs. Hi. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm excellent, how are you? And I'm bike. great, I'm great. How's Palm Springs? Oh, you know, it's paradise. Is it? <laughs> it's paradise, I love that. What's the weather right now? What's, what's that? What's your weather like right now? It is beautiful. It's going to be like 90 today. We got super hot last week, like 105, about two months early. So that was kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we had snow a week ago, like four days ago. Oh, I know. Like when you all were like having snow, we were like 105. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, isn't that crazy? So as you people well, know. So let me ask you a question. So you're in Palm Springs, right? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're sheltering in place there, right? Um, I am. And how are you? Are you well? Do you know is there a lot, what's the COVID? What's your situation like in Palm Springs? So we're well. I we can't quite adjust to this frame. Sorry, I'm like figuring out. No, you're good. Thank you. Uh, we actually did shelter in place eight weeks ago yesterday. We actually did it before the state of California, which of course was the first state in the country. Right. And right after San Francisco. So we've, wow. been, we've been at this a while. So. Uh, Luckily, yeah. we're actually pretty good. Yeah. I think I'm in my seventh week. And I started early just because I, I had to because of COVID. But um, but yeah, I spend a little crazy. But you know, I like sort of trying to make the most of it. And this is one right. of the ways to do it. So I'm aid. So I love that you're in Palm Springs because we're jealous. Everyone, I'm sure we all agree. That totally. They're sitting by your pool right now. Um, and I'm happy to know that you're healthy and happy and all of that. Um, but so I want to give everyone, so I was telling everyone before I got you on, I was like really excited to go to Palm Springs and see you um, and also talk to you about everything that you're doing and what's happening in your world. Oh. Um, but I want to also bring people, sort of give everyone a little background. You're, okay. you're a total West Coast guy, right? Like you are, you're a West Coast boy. I am. I was born, born and bred, born in San Francisco. Yep. Uh, my parents didn't want to raise me in the city. They kind of, um, so we moved to the uh, central coast when I was just like two years old. Yeah. Uh, like Santa Barbara and that area. So yeah, I'm a California guy, born and bred. You are a California guy. So that's cool. And you definitely, and, and I want to know like, um, when you made the move to like starting your career, like, wait, so like, so you're from California school. Did you go to school in California? I went to school in Missouri, so kind of long story short. So yeah, I was born in California. My parents divorced when I was like seven or eight. Yeah. Um, and my mom remarried a bit later, a rocket scientist, like a full on, like a 
<laughs> the legit like rocket that, science. Harry, rocket that must have been science. funny for that. So joke. my stepdad was a rocket scientist, uh, <laughs> and we were living on the central coast, and um, he worked at a Vandenberg Air Force Base here in California, like by Santa Barbara. And actually, when the Challenger went down, um, they kind of what? shut that air, they they like shut that base down. Yeah. So we actually got transferred to Colorado, to like Denver area, where I spent mm -hmm. like uh, most of high school. Um, and I always spent like summers back with my dad uh, up in the Bay Area. So, yeah, kind of always been, well, it's not only really bi-coastal, bi-westal. No, um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> from California to Colorado, yeah, which I, is a beautiful place to grow up. Yeah. Um, and I knew I wanted to do architecture, like, since I was seven years old. Like, I was drawing yeah. floor plans, and my dad gave me my first book on Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, when I was 12, and I always wanted to do architecture. So I was only applying for schools of architecture, and I almost went to Cornell. Is that kind of near you? Yeah. Oh my God! And I then... can drive there in forty, <laughs> like literally forty minutes south of me. Yeah, and then I heard it could snow till May, which like literally this past week or last no, week. No, literally. Proven. So I was like, I don't know, I'm a California guy. I'm not really sure I can handle like snow till May. <laughs> and like Colorado, which is has snow, it's not really cold. You've been there, like it's really, it's like dry. It's not humid like Chicago or New York. Like it can snow one day and be 60 the next. Like we don't get in Colorado, like this just yes. frigid on and I'm, on. I'm, freezing I'm a all. big skier, I'm a big skier. So I'm in Colorado yeah. all the time and I love it. I actually, what, how, do you like Denver now? Are you a big fan of Denver? I was certainly booming. I mean, I probably could have moved back there. So I went to college in Missouri. So I almost, yep. to finish I almost went to Cornell, almost went to Tulane. And my mom is like, you're not going to New Orleans. She's like, that's, no. <laughs> She's like, uh, wait, I got in, I so have to apply. Say, wait, hold on one second. I have to say hello to my friend Anya McNeil. Oh, oh yeah, my God, how are you? It's so, uh, that was so crazy. Um, that's hilarious. Anyways, I had to say a friend, a friend of mine who. Of course. No, that would be. Yeah, uh, but go ahead. Oh. So I went to the Cornell, I to Tulane. Of course, I had to apply to like, you know, CU Boulder, but didn't really want to stay in right. state. So I went to a small liberal arts college in Missouri called Drury. So I went to school in the Ozark Mountains, like before, you know, Jason Bateman made it cool or something. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I went to school for architecture there. And it was a great little college town, like pretty, yeah. like kind of on a lake in the Ozarks and just a nice little bucolic kind of college experience. But I went straight to LA, like after, graduate, after college and graduate school. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so now, so you graduated, so you graduate from school and then what was your, where did you, where was your first stop? Was it LA? Uh, I wanted to work for Disney. So I actually spent summers doing Disney's college program in Orlando and really enjoyed, like wanted to be an Imagineer. Um, and wow, all of that. that's so interesting. Yeah. So how did you, how did you make that segue? What was that? Well, uh, I decided to get my MBA at Drury, so because I could start it like in the fifth year of architecture and like to stay kind of one more year in the summer. And I kind of knew by my third year of architecture, I didn't really want to like follow the typical architecture path, like where you get to, you know, be an intern and draw bathrooms for seven years and then sit for a super hard exam and all of that. Like didn't sound all that appealing to me. So uh, I was going to do business, kind of wanted to be a developer. Anyway, we're for, we're for Disney. Long story, already too long. I had like a new MBA, it was like 2000, and I could have gone to Disney LA. They offered me jobs in corporate. I went to think I turned everything down to move to LA and like be a stockbroker. Oh my God, like, come on. Like, wow, you are like, you hit everything. Uh, yeah, because it was like 2000, like who, you know, who knows the like tech bubble, I can remember right, tech right. bubble, anybody. So seemed like a good idea at the time and the bubble burst like the minute I got to LA, like I yeah. still blame myself. Well, yeah, so I was gonna It was all my fault. Um, so did that and suck it out kind of unhappily, but successfully for a few years. And then obviously it wasn't my passion or my calling. And right. in the meantime, I met my husband, David, who's a sweet Southern travel nurse from Louisiana. <laughs> and, uh, he was, had a four week assignment in LA and never went back. And anyway, my mom got very sick in Colorado and spent like a year and a half in the hospital and my dad got sick and passed away in San Francisco when I was like 27. And I kind of realized life's too short not to do what you love. And we had spent one weekend in Palm Springs at that point. But if you've been here, you know, that's like more than enough time to fall in love with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at 27 years old, I just said, I'm just going to make the, just, you know, throw up, just take the plunge and move out there. Didn't know what I would do. Knew that David could right. work in healthcare and just moved out here. And, and now, 
Read it out myself. Question. Was it your first time in Palm Springs or was it your first time there for like? Katy Perry, yes, it was a jam in the 80s, but it wasn't such a jam like in 2001, like not so much, like investment banking wasn't such a hit in 2001. Uh, but yeah. uh, so <laughs> took the move to go back and uh, yes, yeah, just like took the plunge and then like moved to Palm Springs. That is awesome. Uh, I was 27 years old, like to say I was the youngest person here would not even be like bragging <laughs> it was just like a mathematical so fact. True. like yeah i'm still on the younger side like yeah. less and less every day yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but it wasn't all that cool <laughs> back in 2001 and That's like you know, coachella wasn't really a thing yet and i just was 27 years old like pounding the pavement in palm springs yeah yeah, yeah. well it's so funny I, palm springs is so drastically different now than it was when i my first times going there. I think the first time I was in Palm Springs, I was golfing with my parents, um, right. like maybe in high school or freshman. In that's college. either everyone's first experience or like spring break yeah. before you know yeah. Sonny Bono drove it out. No, yeah. that sounds way cooler than what I did. But anyways, I was golfing with my I think my entire family, and um, and that was my first time there. And then when I was you know in like I guess maybe in my twenties, I ended up going there with some friends when we were in LA. And it was definitely like an older group. And it felt like I, you know, it was like, uh, I love the architecture, but I didn't yeah. really sort of, it didn't make sense to me. Also, I lived on the East Coast. I lived in New York City. I'm living yeah. in New York City, so I wasn't like, that wasn't a real convenient commute. So anyway, so then the last four or five times I've been there, it has totally changed. I mean, it's yeah. so, there's definitely a renaissance at there. the moment in Palm Springs. Um, and I think people are excited about, hold on one second. Lago, stop eating our furniture. No, uh, stop where's it. My, where's my <laughs> Harley? Such an asshole. Of that. I get up with you doing that. Why we got to protect the furniture. God knows. Stop. I will always wait for you to protect the furniture, my friend. He's it's like fun. eating a pillow right now in front of me. Like, <laughs> I just can't even believe it. Henry but Ball, anyway, how are you? Yeah. So, so um, yeah. but yeah, it's amazing what a difference um, the vibe there is, the energy, the, the yeah. hotels, the restaurants. I mean, just sort of the whole thing. So it's, it's really cool. Um, what so when you so you move there right you fall in love fall in had, love you basically in love you've my, tried with, every career. with my man and like palm springs yeah moved out here yeah i uh, knew that he could work as a nurse yeah. and found myself here and i was literally like over educated for everything but like had no experience for anything at all yeah. so yeah uh it was a little frustrating because there's you know there's a whole lot of industry here like there are a lot right. of young people right. Uh, most people are right. sort of retiring. Yep. The hospitality is, of course, huge industry, but right. wasn't, you know, I, I could have gone to Cornell for hospitality, but too snowy, so I didn't right. do that. So, uh, <laughs> you and snow. God, good thing you're not here. You'd have a heart attack. All right. So, literally, like, spent six months, like, applying, not really finding anything. I was about, I was kind of about to give up. I had, you know, like, had, you know, had an MBA, a degree in architecture, some finance experience. And like was literally like interviewing to be a barista. Not that there's anything wrong with right, that. Right, but you were just. Yeah. But I was like, I just I have to work. Like I got to do something. Um, and then I was at a dinner party, uh, and with this, you know a bunch of new friends or strangers or both. And this guy was seated next to me, and he worked for an interior design firm. Right. And he literally said, "Oh my gosh, my boss just today was saying that we need to hire." And so that history, it was like a ten-person firm, which I think is a pretty big. Firm. I mean, don't be. You're much yeah. bigger than that. I know. No, like, no, I'm not. But that's a pretty big firm, and so, uh, and it was. Get this. It was the firm that was Steve Chase Associates. Do you know who Steve oh, yeah. Chase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, if you don't know Steve Chase, everyone, please Google him. Icon of design of the '80s yeah. and '90s. Uh, maybe like had like yeah. like has uh, more covers of AD than anybody and, still. And did you start as a designer, or did you start? As a I started at no. So. That was a 10 person for it. Um, Steve uh, passed away um, of AIDS in the 90s, and but his firm was carrying on uh, under it had just changed names to the new principal, uh, Randy Patton. And there was a principal, there was three project managers, and two of them had an assistant and one didn't. So I was hired to be one of the project managers' assistants. And uh, cool, you know, I saw, um, I was there for like nine months, and I had a little bit of a, a kind of couple projects on the side on my own. And um, after like nine months, I'm like, do to do, we'll just you know, open my own doors. And obviously to say I didn't know. Wait, how long were you there before you opened your own doors? Like 
maybe nine months. Nine months? Oh my <laughs> God, you're a brave person. That's incredible. So now did you work on both the design side and architecture as well as business? I mean, what was your role when you were there? Uh, honey, I was filing. I mean, come on, oh, I, was really? there for like, I was there for like a minute and oh. I was like on the bottom of the total You're hole. killing I me. Any I love that. it. I love it. I, so so I, like, didn't, I didn't first know design anything. Like, what was I your knew, first design project? I knew how to log into our studio webware, which is the software yeah. they use that I still use. And we had to like print everything and put everything in a binder, you know, and like, yeah. um, I did a lot of that. And I remember one day, I came in on a Monday, my boss had obviously been there on a Sunday, and I was like, why is he working on Sunday? Well, like, now I completely understand that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he had given me, like, this task list. Like, it wasn't exactly Double Wears Prada, but it was, like, the 30 things, everything from, like, I need, like, there's these pots in the lobby that need planting, and I need you to go to this garden store, but he didn't say which one, and talk to so-and-so, and, like, get this certain kind of peat law. I mean, it was like all, down, all this like just really cool errands. Um, that's actually my favorite memory. I had like three days to get all that stuff done. Uh, no, I didn't know anything at all. I no, I, I think I knew what a CFA was. And because I had to file that's that. For and I had to file the resource library. I don't know what he's talking about. That's a cutting for approval. So what was your first design project? Like how did you make that sort of, that's a big sort of jump from like knowing what yeah. a CFA is. <laughs> So my neighbor at the really chic modern townhouse we had bought had a business partner who had this like 8,000 square foot house, like up on the hill, like in the nicest neighborhood in town. And like, that was my first job. <laughs> and honestly, it's been downhill ever since. I mean, I, it really has. <laughs> um, I peaked now, like in the very beginning. This client? Is this a client that you're still working with? Uh, no, he's just, no, not, I mean, no. uh, not, I mean, we're friendly, but um, kind of sold the bigger house. They had kids, got down the kids must be like, they had twins back before it was cool. And like, I think the girls are 16 now and they moved to the suburbs and I helped them, but yeah, they're just doing that thing. You know, it's fly. And the kids are actually like, have jobs, drive around in cars and start to have I, children. I, and you're I, like, I, hey, yeah. what happened? I, Maybe like, like a week ago. Um, okay. So, um, well, so who, so who or what inspires your aesthetic? Like, your, oh. you know, what's your, what sort of, uh, you know, what's your inspiration? So, I guess I was doing modern, like, God, how long have I been in business? Since 03, so 15 years. Like, I went to school for architecture. I went to Europe to study, you know, the Bauhaus and the modern masters in college. You know, spent a summer in Paris and loved Mies and Corbusier and, Loved all that. So when I yeah. went on my own in like 03, 04, 05, like what was cool back in 05, Tom? I'm going to ask you. Like, what do you think? What was, was cool, cool in 05? Okay, first, not me. Second of <laughs> all, I would say what was cool in 05? Well, I actually think Queer Eye was actually kind of big at that moment. Um, yeah, yes, you, you that were was... cool in 04, 05. And I actually remember <laughs> um, watching it. I would say what was cool back then, I would say. Um, I think, you know, sort of the idea of things becoming a little bit cleaner and a little bit um, less fussy was starting to become, a, yeah, that, that was like a momentum. I think people were starting to get, you know, I think mid-century was really kind of in its kind of heyday of the Renaissance, you know what I mean? Like, I think, you know, bit, like, yeah. I remember one of my favorite stores in New York City at that time was Wyeth, and I was shocked. Oh, yeah there a lot for clients and they were really amazing um you know like they basically i think they bought every piece of dunbar furniture <laughs> i remember in, following them in yeah. the us and 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 revitalized each piece in such a cool way i thought they did such an amazing job and their showroom space was such an amazing ex seductive experience totally. not only for designers but when i would bring clients there they would not bat an eyelash at like a you know, an $18,000, you know, settee. They were like, yeah, let's do it. So it was kind of crazy. It was just so seductive the way they did it. Was, it. Yeah. it was, beautiful, but so, that was that moment. So it was cool, at least when I went out of my own doors in California, was like the Tuscan look. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my so God. So that's what was cool here in New York, where you're ahead of the curve. You were probably already doing with Century. Everyone here, like, wanted, right. like, the McMansion and Diane Lane and just God, God yep. bless her and that yep. movie in Italy. That Tuscan moment. It that was Tuscan the Tuscan moment. moment and everything Tuscan. here was, like, Tuscan. Yeah. And that was not my jam. So I was doing contemporary back then. Yeah. I wouldn't call it mid-century. I was kind of doing modern. I'm going to say before it was cool, at least in here out here in the country in palm springs right uh so i actually had to source from like a lot of commercial vendors you know i wasn't there wasn't right. at least or maybe because like i didn't know anything because i had been an assistant for like a minute <laughs> you know i didn't know how to find the modern stuff and i wasn't in new york i hadn't even been to new york i don't think in my life at that point weird uh so i was doing contemporary i then i got a great client she's from chicago we're still friends. She actually, Steve Chase had done her home, right. her homes before. And she somehow found me through like a furniture store. Oh my God, I gotta say this. So I get like my <laughs> second job, I drive in and like I pull through the gate and like, cause literally like a furniture store called who like, like um, just like, you know, a pal of mine who was about my age at a, a cute little store down the street said this, you know, woman was in and she was kind of showing me like her floor plan and she didn't really know what to do. and. <laughs> I know you kind of do design now, and do you want to go help her? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, so got <laughs> so I pull in, and it's like a beautiful, like new neighborhood in in a rancher mirage, like you know yeah. where the Obamas go, and like and like right by uh, Sunnylands, like across the street from like the Annenberg Estate, which is Sunnylands, as you know. And I'm like, oh. and there were brand new, like really modern things, like five thousand square feet, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. And I walk in and I think I'm a little bit nervous. I had literally, so for anyone just starting out, like my takeaway, there's a point to the story I promise. Like I, all I had was like, like three pictures of my own house. My own like <laughs> condo townhouse. That was your and portfolio? <laughs> it was my portfolio, like three, like printed. I couldn't even put it in a binder because it would have looked stupid. Like they were maybe in a folder or like with a paper clip. I don't even know. So, <laughs> But I have sidebar always invested in photography since the very beginning. Like I actually hired a professional yeah. photographer, seemed like a force at the really time. Like if you're starting out, like that has helped me the entire way. Like yeah. I skipped yeah. vacations Absolutely. or a meal to like take great photography, you know? Yeah. So agreed. agreed. I think she was looking at, you know, and like she's like, Well, you know, what do you char? And like I'm like, Well, you know, a seventy five dollars an hour. I think I was like super nervous to even say that. <laughs> I don't think she, because the house had no furniture. She had just moved from a much bigger house that I learned later Steve Chase had done. And he, you know, <laughs> he did like the Crocs, so the McDonald's fame, like this man, yeah. you know, yeah. it was expensive. Like it was expensive, so, which I didn't know. So <laughs> <laughs> she's like $75. She's like, I think we can, I think we can do that. I think that's and like, she just took a fun. chance on like an unknown kid. And Barbara Feldman, I don't think you're watching, but like, God bless you. And thank you. Like just people taking a chance on like an unknown yeah. kid. It's part of the reason yeah. I'm talking to you. Right. And then I remember the first time, like we picked yeah. out some furniture and I went to her to present like the price thing out. And I think it was like $35,000 to like for maybe a room or something. Yeah. And I was literally driving in the gate and I'm like, I'm about to ask this person for like 30, I mean, I never like as cash, but like, like in my old job, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really money, like right, right. Know, finance and all that. I mean, it's kind of funny money. I never like got the check some, you know, it's all, it wasn't like, yeah. like she was trusting me and buying actual goods from me, not right, some right. stock <laughs> that is whatever it is, you know? And I'm like, is she going to, like hand me a check for like thirty five thousand. I'm like, I'm like, okay. I mean, totally did. Like, that's I, I that feel like her dining were, table cost that from Steve Chase. Were, so. were you excited, or were you more excited or more nervous when that when that sort of transaction happened? Uh, I was nervous before, and then I think excited, and then maybe incredulous, and then kind of like, I, I guess I gotta, you know, I gotta do this now. Right. So, right. Uh, sure. Yeah. So that's like, I haven't told that story then. Anyway, so, so uh, that's how, so that's so, my I mean, early I would day. Like, oh, uh-oh, we're, there, you're back, you're back, I think, or you might be frozen. <laughs> it's funny, you're frozen, and yet you're in Palm Springs. Um, are you back? Am I still frozen? <laughs> there you Am are. Am I really frozen? You're coming back. I think we have, we okay. have a little, you were frozen I would for by, a second. I would go by the window. Can you hear, what? Maybe that'll.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love getting the tour. Is this is this home or office? It's beautiful. It's my store. I'm at my store. I'm at my store in Palm Springs. Yeah, great. Right. It looks great. So I'll go closer to the windows or something. So yeah, here we are. Got it. Love All right. It. Cool. So, um, so like, how would you? So I mean, I you you're you're you're, you're you live and breathe modernism, which I love. Um, yeah. And sort of, what do you think? Um, the California lifestyle, what does that mean? Like sort of that modern California lifestyle, what does that mean to you? How do you describe that? Like, how do I? How would you describe that sort of modern California lifestyle? Like, oh you, gosh. Uh, I mean, everyone wants like, you know, relax, you know, like um, to be like, you know, like easy luxury and all that I think is like, everyone wants that. So I can't claim that, but like to me, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a little less structured. Like, I think of East Coast being more, you know, symmetrical and more structured in smaller rooms, like here, like with the open floor plans and the space. I think that we sort of like, just kind of like, you know, like we lay things out differently. And um, right. it's a bit, at least in, what's that? Oh, can you hear me still? Yeah, no, I agree. It's so interesting uh, that you say that because I was, look, I, you know, when, when, um, I think the architecture that you sort of typically deal with in, in Palm Springs, and there's so many great examples of mid-century architecture, like really over the top amazing examples. Oh yeah. Um, I think that it's so much fun in those spaces to play with the furniture layouts because you can use such interesting shapes of furniture. You know, sofas are, totally. are half circles or they're, or yeah, you have these totally. great L shapes that that then have another extension going in another direction. And then you can have like a chaise floating with like an ottoman next to it. And that feels really good in those spaces. You know, it's like, it's something that would be yeah. a little, maybe not quite as at home in a more traditional structure. So I think that's yeah. actually really, yeah, I think that's a great point. Totally, and my good um, friend- How would you Karen describe Egan. your style? My, 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 my good that? friend and client, Karen Egan, my, my good friend, Karen Egan, and client is commenting like bright, cheerful, and optimistic. And I think that is- I love that. Inspires me, like optimism, like actually in my first book, California Modern, I write in the prologue, yeah. like the idea of going west, I think oh, kind of inspires me. Like the idea of like, you know, people like had to be like adventurers and a bit crazy to, you know, just set out in a covered wagon and like head yeah. into the yeah. unknown. And that idea of going west, whether it was the Dust Bowl, and you were literally, you know, leaving some kind of, you know, devastation and hoping for a better life, or, you know, you were kind of going into the unknown, like the, the idea of like going west and like, you know, yeah. seeking like a greener pasture or like a warmer yeah. climb is right. kind of still in our blood and our DNA. So that idea of optimism and things getting better um, yeah. and finding like a better place to live, you know, a place in the sun, like that, like, you know, that kind of uh, literally and metaphorically is what inspires me, totally. I think that's really cool. I love that. And I think I would describe your aesthetic as very kind of like, it does feel kind of optimistic and light. And yeah. there's, you know, the the pops of color and sort of it, it's very respectful to, um, you know, the architecture, I think. You know, it's very respectful to the architecture. Like it has a very strong place. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think it's really beautiful and it's actually really fun. Like I remember being in the, um, in the lounge that you designed and I thought that was so cool. We had so much fun that night. We, I was there, I, I'm trying to remember, Carson and I were in Palm Springs. You um, were, yeah. For an event that we were doing and why, excuse me. But, oh, it was that big, it was that big event that we were hosting. And, yeah, like, and IDS, we went out yeah. with you. Interior Design Society, I think, yeah. Yes, it was right, yeah. that's right. Um, that's right. And I think that, um, I think that, yeah, I think your work is really, I do think that it embraces everything you just said about optimism and about, you know, sort of really being respectful and excited. And, um, I don't know, it's just, it, it's very, it just feels like it, it, it sort of tells us a great story visually uh -huh. with the architecture, which I love. Uh -huh. I'm fascinated by the architecture where you are. I love it. Well, it's that, just, that means that means so much to me from you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, wow, thank you. So, yeah. And then, yeah, well, 
definitely the, 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 the um, there's all such amazing houses and architecture here. And of course, like to get to do those things are amazing. And like my little, can I give you like my little history of 101 of like yeah, architecture in Palm Springs? So, we love a 101 on house calls. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, totally. So like my take, like my little five minute take on like what happened here. And cause like I went to school for architecture and I went to Europe to study it and the Bauhaus and the masters, like, you know, there was all those, you know, there's the Bauhaus in the late twenties and the like, you know, and the international style of the thirties right. and all those yeah. great, you know, yeah. people in Europe, like Beast and Corbusier. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, their protégés came to America, like, you know, Sullivan and Kahn and Philip Johnson. And they were doing, you know, they were extending these principles into the, 30s and the 1940s, even the 1950s on the East Coast. Like, we can all picture, you know, like a Philip Johnson's glass house in New Canaan, right? Which is amazing. You know, so Mr. Johnson did his glass house and it was this modernist box, but it was dropped into the landscape in Connecticut, which doesn't have the weather we have. So, like, it right. was sort of about being in the environment and looking at it, but not so much being in it or experiencing or connecting right. with it. And then the protégés of those people, you know, came west and they went west right. so when they right. got to california you know they were taking the principles of post and beam and like open right. floor plans and applying it to our climate and our right. landscape right. which by the way by the way i think is a much more uh, it, it actually just it, it's a, it's a definite especially back then when they were dealing with the type of building materials that they had at their you know that they were working with Absolutely. it was definitely a better you know sort of relationship to yeah you know, to that geography and that, that weather. Um, but, you know, one of the things that's, I think, very interesting about Palm Springs that... Uh, Billy Baldwin would have been like the 1960s. Someone's asking what era was Billy Baldwin? Like the 60s. The 60s, yeah. Yeah, 50, yeah, 50 60s. Very late. Yeah, maybe he was yeah. an actor in the 50s. Um, I, you know, I think also interesting, um, and, and he was quite modern for someone on the East Coast that was working in sort of classical... Oh, yeah kind of interior design or, you know, it's part of that traditional world. But, you know, the interesting thing about Palm Springs is that back in the day, Hollywood actors, when they would sign their contracts, mm -hmm. they could only go like, I think it was like 90 or 100 miles 100, from, yeah. from the studio because if they needed them to shoot something or come back or whatever, they wanted to be able to put them in a, you know, in, in a vehicle and yes. get them back to get them back to the set. And exactly. So, so Palm Springs was not only, it became this kind of like, you know, mecca of all of these people that worked in production as well as um, that were the, the, the talent. And I also think that you had, they, that was a group that was, you know, the Hollywood world was a, a bit more of a progressive group. It was a progressive, you know, concept. Um, and I think that the idea of progressive architecture was also very appealing. You know, it was it? It, it was. was. So I think and they say that. Um, that yeah. Well. yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Frank Sinatra had to be talked into his modern house, Twin Palms, I'm told, but uh, by his architect. But uh, <laughs> but like you know, he did go along yeah. with it. Absolutely. He's an East so. Coast Italian guy. I can't, <laughs> yeah, he was like, I'm not getting Tuscan. I'm not getting that McMansion. What? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that absolutely to like, kind of finish your question. Uh, like on what inspires me like yeah definitely like i love looking at the old photos of the celebrities here in palm springs yeah. and you know yes they were beautiful and they were glamorous absolutely but in these photographs you know they're on vacation and that's very different than when you see them in la or on a stage set yeah and for you know like basically... lots of them palm springs was the only place in the world they were really being themselves like mm -hmm. rock hudson or dinah shore or even someone who was straight but like you know like having an affair or whatever. Right. Like people were like, had their guard down and were living their lives authentically in Palm Springs. Perhaps it was the only place in the world right. where they could really be themselves and right. authentic. It's like that right. idea of authenticity and realness yeah. mixed with beauty and glamour is something I sort of right. strive for. Well, there, the was, and that, that there was a lot of safety there in terms of the industry. Like they knew a lot of people, they knew all their neighbors. They probably knew a lot of the people that were doing hair and makeup and set design and all of that stuff. Definitely. So it was it was kind of like an, it was a little bit of an insulated world at that time. Yeah. But um, you know, it, it was probably very similar to sort of how, how the Hamptons to New York City or any kind of like right. one of those communities um, to uh, a city. Um, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, I, I love that. 
Um, and it's, it's an interesting how it's really becoming, I think it's happening again. Don't you think that that's kind of what's happening now? Not so yeah, much with right? celebrities, but with everybody from LA, people are loving it. Oh, they're loving it. Yeah, absolutely. It's gotten expensive. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I've been here for 15 years, so I'm thrilled yeah. to just kind of help put, uh, oh, someone just wrote something really nice about me. And I have to, um, Christopher is one of the <laughs> kindest human beings you can know. Such a giving spirit. Oh my gosh, I thank you, to Tiffany. That's really your doll. You You're made amazing. my day. That's really I agree. sweet. We all need to hear. That is a total that one from the I support that wholeheartedly. And uh, also, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about I know you have a new website that you're working on. Uh, I do. And I wanted to ask you about that because I'm so interested to hear how you're connecting both because you do commercial, you do residential, you have a store. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about how how that is how that's going and tell us about it, but also the importance of the digital platforms that we have available to us now and, and how we're developing. Absolutely. This is the deepest that well, that's the hardest question Tom's ever asked me, first of all. Like usually it's you know, <laughs> like high point and you know, like a jello shot, we're talking about something much less impressive than the than the <laughs> digital sphere. But, I'm uh, so I was hoping, yes, thank you for asking. I was hoping to come on today and say that our new website was launched, but uh, I delayed it slightly. We are launching next uh, Saturday morning, the 23rd, though, in time for Memorial Day weekend and my birthday, the 24th. is my gift to myself. Nice. So we are, um, Wait, your birthday is May 24th? It is. Are you a Taurus? I'm a Gemini. You're a Gemini. You're on the other. Okay. I'm on, on the cusp. Yeah, I'm on the cusp. This weekend, and I'm a Taurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, yours is this weekend? Oh, yeah. Birthday. I'm going to be 27. I'm very excited. I'm happy. Yeah. I can't wait. You're, you know, 30s are going to be awesome. Just wait. Like, they're going to be, they're going to rock. Yeah. That's what everybody says. <laughs> Just wait. The best is yet to come. Uh, so, I have a new website with online shopping coming out. So I know everyone's doing that and it's amazing and God bless it. Luckily, I already had it in the works. I was like three years late in my case because we have this little store where I am, I can picture if you want. Um, oh, your right store is the, amazing. I love your store. Uh, right in Palm Springs. And I didn't do retail right away. It took me like 12 years to do uh, retail. I wanted to like early on and like all these mentors and ASID said, don't do a store. You're like, lose a bunch of money. And finally, after 12 years, I just like ignored them um, and did it full when, the, when the time was right for me. So, and our guests are from all over the world, like literally Palm Springs, maybe from you know, LA and New York and Chicago and Australia and Germany and Europe. So, and it was wanted an online store for like three years and I'm kind of busy and lazy. So I didn't do it. So I finally hired someone to do the store in January. But then, very typical me, I really hadn't have taken the time. I had the time. I didn't make the time to focus on it and like pick what's going to go on it and how right. it would be. So, the slight slowdown of COVID has been a blessing in that I've gotten to focus on the online store. Right. And I, it was looking great, and we probably could have launched it today. But then I just wanted to do even more, and I wanted to add even more products. Got uh, it. So we're doing that, and it'll. And be right why next are you time. adding more products because of? sort of where we are in the world right now? Is it, is it because of like sort of the people, I, I'm, I'm finding that my showroom in New York City, Sedgwick and Brattle, mm -hmm. we're still selling, people are still calling, we're still selling, I mean, invoices, photographs, all that stuff is going out. And we're, we're you know, we've been kind of moving in the, in the direction of more e-commerce, um, really going in e-commerce. You are, I haven't, I haven't checked it yet. Are you guys, so are you guys doing it already? No, we're not, we're, and we're, so we're on doing, we were kind of in the works. It would have probably have been kind of I launching see. right about now, but because we're, you know, we're all working remotely, that's not one of the things that we've chosen to kind of keep as like front. No, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely had to make it a priority and shift team members to <laughs> it. Why did I have a product? I, it looked great. It could have been fine. I kind of just realized, and we probably had a lot of products, probably several, several hundred. Um, I think maybe, yeah, I guess because of this time, like, people are wanting more and they're wanting to do more. And I just kind of wanted to add another weight a week and I guess, you know, like make a better right. for impression uh, and just have it more robust and a, just like, you know, a more rounded out offerings of my style. So um, like more furniture, our friend Bobby Burke from the New Queer Eye, yeah. we're featuring his collection and all the things in my store, like, you yeah. know, um, He's a great from, from guy. Jewelry and lifestyle to yeah. There's there's lifestyle. 
there's jewelry, there's bags. So it really is sort of a great go-to for my version of Palm Springs, not everyone's version of Palm Springs. But uh, so yeah, so it's, yeah, we're adding just a lot more. And then it's my portfolio. We're like launching probably 18 projects that people haven't seen because I just hadn't taken the time to photograph them. So we have a lot. So it's all part of our new design and the shopping. Oh. It's all on one site. You don't leave our design firm site to go to the shopping site. It's all oh, together. Okay. It's all together for now. That's uh, exciting. Uh, did you, yeah. how long did it take you to sort of put all that together? I hired the company to redesign the site in January. Um, they're out of Austin. So I guess five, six months, yeah. Wow, that's great. That's exciting. It is, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's really yeah. cool. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Um, yeah, check back in in about a week or so, yeah. So that's that. cool. So I'm sure you have a lot of Wendover um, artwork um, well, in your collection. So yeah, so what Tom was referring to everybody is Tom and I am lucky to be in such good company. Uh, when I was unemployed, I was watching Tom on TV. So like this <laughs> huge full circle moment for me. No, truly, I just want to like honor that for a second and just respect that. I think how the world comes around and that, you know, a 25 year old who was unemployed and was about to work at Starbucks and like living in the housing that like my a travel nurse husband's company provided for him. Like, little time, I remember watching your show at this like extended stay America where we were living. We first moved here because David was a travel nurse. And so they like give you housing. Right, right. right. Uh, and so that's kind of was our first. And then we bought a place not very long later. Um, but like I can vividly remember watching your show <laughs> in this like hotel room. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's it's, so it's, funny. It's, it's nice to be here. Is my point. Is and so life has all my work. Yeah. Like um, just you, you. Yeah. You. You. I live. A, uh, there's a quote by by a Rainer Wilkie. Like you live along one day into the answer. And I think yeah. that. <laughs> We're always living I mean, in the And the answer never comes, really. It's yeah, like yeah. <laughs> or every day is the answer. To hear One it. of the two. I don't know. In my case, yeah. Uh, so when do, yeah, so Tom, and I, Tom and I both have an art collection for the same company uh, who licenses our, licenses our ideas and our names. And uh, so, yeah, so Wendover Art Group, we definitely are featuring our products uh, on the website. My, we have about yeah. 450 SKUs. Of art, I know you have more since you've been doing it a bit longer than I have. Just gonna say, I, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, so we're for yeah, we're featuring the Wendover collection on the. That's uh, exciting. Like That's yeah, cool. this is a piece behind me. Shameless blog, one of my kind of a travel poster inspiration. So yeah, yeah, very cool. Love that piece. Now let me ask you a question. So like, I mean, you you do a lot of like in your work. I see there's you do a lot of like wall sculptures and like a mix of art and like. Um, you know, mm -hmm. framed art and sort of things that are a little bit more sculptural, you know? I mean, what's your philosophy on sort of, or maybe philosophy or like the importance of art in a space? So, well, you do lots of, you know, second homes as well, I think, Tom. So you probably have the same yeah. situation. But, you know, we are, I guess we're lucky. Uh, my average client kind of comes to me. They've just bought a home in Palm Springs and they don't have anything. So, right. Right. awesome. So that's great. Right. So, you know, and they might have a collection at their home in Seattle or Chicago or New York. They, you know, they might bring down or invest in right. a key piece for the main spaces. But, you know, really homes don't feel finished or like a home. A house isn't a home until there's art on the walls. Right. And shockingly, like everything looks better when it's on the wall. Like you can kind of right. go to Home Goods and get something decent for the bathroom or the fourth right. bedroom. And it improves the space, obviously, right. well chosen, just right. kind of by being right. hung on the wall. Well, so I, I do think that art yeah. really helps finish a house. And what I love about our collections for Wendover is it brings, you know, stylish pieces. Is you know, it is like a production art, but it's made right. in America. Right. I mean, right. human hands, literally. Yeah, what no. I tell my clients too about uh, you know about our collections is it's not like some robot, you know, right. making pieces of art. Yes, it isn't, you know, one of a kind, but it's literally being made for you in the USA. It's being printed, you know. Well, it's like, also, I mean, like there's humans are actually, you know, making the frames. A lot of the frames. are actually hand done. I mean, they're- Yeah, oh, they are, you're right. And and they're great. And, I, but I, I will say, I mean, I think that oh. it's it's becoming, you know, they're, they're doing more and more and more interesting things. And we work are. the art department and we kind of come up with these concepts and these ideas. And it's really, yeah. I- 
really right. amazing and fun. And I approach it from the same point of view that an artist would approach it. You know what I mean? I'm sure you do the same. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I think that art really, all of those like elements of like sculpture and art, um, all of those sort of small pieces and even accessories and, and books and things like that, they start to give a home and the beautiful pieces of furniture that people are lucky enough to choose to live with, they start yeah. to give it a soul and a point of view and they start to Absolutely. create a narrative that I think um, makes that second home or that third home or that first home or the only yeah. home start to feel like it sort of has your sensibility and your personality. It does. I, think, I always feel like art to me is really about something that people feel emotionally connected to. Yes. So, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a, you know, it's, it's, you know, a, a very well-known artist uh, mm -hmm. or it's something that's just a decorative piece that you fall in love with, you know, and it could be a Calder sculpture or it could be a sculpture in the style of Calder. It can, absolutely. I mean, you can take inspiration from that. And sculpture, we, you know, like, we do do wall sculpture because these, you know, these are large open floor plans. We do a lot. You can't have paintings on just every single wall. It looks like, right. you know, yeah, like, kind of like an art gallery. So we'll try to mix in, you know, something that is a painting or an oil or a print of an oil, as you know, as you clay with photography, with right. sculpture. Photography, I think, is a huge mm -hmm. category right now. And we're adding more um, in our yeah. offerings for our Wendover. Because what I love about yeah. photography is I do have clients who are maybe particular and they don't want, you know, a clay. They don't want right. a print right. of no, a totally. real painting. But they right. don't mind photography because by nature, it, it's still legit. Like it's still, right. you know, a photography that is, whether it's one or right. 10 or a thousand, it's still printed the same. It's still done yeah. the same. The, you know, actual uh, media is still the same. So we do like lots of photography now. Um, and people well, are actually asking that. One so. of the other things is, and someone just said, I think art should be a conversation piece, which I totally agree with. And it should be something that's provocative or interesting, that, pro you know, that kind of promotes an interesting dialogue or even just reaction or emotional connection. But, you know, very often I will have clients that are doing a house that's oceanfront uh, or a house that's in the mountains that they, they rent out when they're not using it. Mm -hmm. and. Um, or they let other people use it, or their kids from college go to use it. And they, they, they only have maybe one or two moments where they really want to sort of hit a home run with art. Exactly. And then there are other areas where they want to do interesting, fun things, you know, that are, that, you know, you can do really interesting things with, with um, like, for example, Windover, where I can take an image of like skis and have them, or, you know, like a photograph of them and have them blown up into like, 14 feet high and right. them, you know, like tw 30 inches wide, you know, like 12 feet tall. Yes, and, I like that. And, and have them going down a hallway. And it's just like this kind of like wow moment. It's really about scale and image and concept. Right. And it just becomes a conceptual moment. But I think that's what's, um, I think that a lot of times clients don't want to have to ensure, you know, like multi-dollar no. paintings that are when all of a sudden they have nano doors that open up out to the, that's true and they have salt air and all of these other things coming yeah. and sort of you know sort of ruining it basically is totally for, and yeah for, i mean i you know i also yeah i mean i do think some things can that should be you know a you know conversation and the home run that you said and then sometimes you know it it, it needs to be well thought out and just kind of do the job like a blank wall yeah. It just doesn't have the same feeling. So, yeah. and to your point of like the skis, you know, maybe it's my idea, you know, you know, perhaps it's my days at Disney, but I do kind of like a theme or a story, but right. I don't want to be thematic. So like if, you know, well, you want to do it in a way that's or I drink food in a way like funny. how do I reference that location without just being literal? You know, like, yeah, but like literal. So we have pieces that are like, you know, yeah. like abstract pool water kind of right. done in an abstract way or a close-up right. like instead of the skis. Right. Um, I can show you. Yeah, I can show you some if you want. But uh, no, yeah, so I agree. I agree with you 100%. It just you can take something that could be literal and make it sort of abstract, interesting, blow it up, change right. the scale, just simplify it down to like, I know, the, the can I, you know, can I show you something? I would love it. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. Love photography. Love so <laughs> I wonder if anyone knows there's a really famous door in Palm Springs. It's like more insta famous. Oh, than yeah, you or I love me. that photo. It's yeah. called the yeah. pink door. 
Um, yeah. And so literally, this is a I door. I noticed we're both wearing pink today. Hello, pink Wait, door. Hello, we're so on trend at the moment. So this is the pink door, which is like a very famous door. Um, it's literally, it has its own hashtag, hashtag that pink door. And literally, it's like, it's, it's, um, it's like close to my house. And literally, like, Insta girls are driving around trying to find it to take their picture in front of it. So, like, literally. I mean, now you can, like, search the address and the hell are going to hate it. But, the door still so I wanted to take the same photo. But actually, we, we, like, took out all the color except um, the pink and the, and the kind of greenish blue agave. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't just take the photo. We took the photo and, and kind changed of it. Yeah. yeah, kind of modernized it. I and then someone can't... was asking about these pieces. Uh, yeah. These are from our collection. Um, and uh, I found this artist in Palm Springs. Uh, I love so that I, piece. So like he, he usually paints much smaller. And I had him do some pieces um, in colors I requested. Uh, and then we just made it much larger. And so this is part of our offerings uh, for Wendover. Yeah. I so. love that. That's a really cool Thank piece. Thank you. And um, because of like my architecture background, we did you know, like some really abstract, you know, contemporary oh, kind of you know, mod architecture. Love that. Um, and that's change it up. Thing. Yeah, so that's part of it. And then in the 60s, kind of Googie theme, which actually I did a whole project in college on Googie, which is sort of, I guess, yeah. prescient. So my, uh, we kind of just made this fun kind it of It looks like more, vibe. that reminds me of Morris Lapidus architecture. Beans and would, boggles and bean poles. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Because Tom is so smart. He's not just fun. He's smart, everybody. That was uh, <laughs> that was Morris Lapidus. I, I wasn't going to throw that out there, but since you name dropped, and I'm not going to say. <laughs> it is. So, yeah, it totally Anyone is. That so, grew up with um, so, I have a question for you. Um, what makes an interior beautiful um, to Christopher Kennedy? Oh, hi. How, how fun was oh. that? Uh oh! <laughs> Just dropped the phone. I'm not very good at like multitasking, so. Uh, you were great. Anyway. That was really fun, by the way. Thank you for taking us on that little sort of. That was fun. I loved it. A little tour of my store. It uh, right. I'll tell you what. Anyway, I'll, I can tell you why I'm here because my house had a flood, so like, I, I'm, I like sheltering in place in my store. So I just went out of my house. Uh, ironic when it's supposed to shelter in place. So it wasn't a flood. It was a slab leak. It was a slow <laughs> leak. Uh, so the mold's been remediated, so we're not living at home right now. Um, uh, my store has like a full apartment above, so where we, our storefront in Palm Springs is like 10 years old, and the right. landlord who built the building is like an old hippie. Actually, his family like settled Palm Springs in the 20s. They've like literally been here for like 100 years, which isn't very long in New York years, but by California yeah. terms, they've been here like forever. Yeah. That's the uh, and there's, time. <laughs> and there's like apartments above every storefront. Um, they thought shopkeepers might, you know, live by their stores. Great idea. But no one really does. They're just, just like all privately uh, rented. But the, the, the apartment above our store became available. So we were able to get it. And it's like a furniture showroom. So downstairs is more gifty right. accessories, you know, Prada Forte. And then upstairs is like a 2,000 square foot apartment, 10 foot ceilings. That's so great. Like show furniture in situ. So when my house had a flood issue or a water issue six weeks ago, we're able to move uh, here. So that's not nice. That's awesome. Sounds yeah, awesome. it worked out. So anyway, so what was you getting at? Oh, I'm just saying, what makes I an interior beautiful to Christopher Kennedy? What's like, is there a thing that you sort of feel like is uh, je ne sais quoi? <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of, like, I don't think I'm the, that unique in that. I can kind of appreciate any style if it's well done and well yep. thought out. So, you know, I think like any, any, any kind of complete, well thought out concept, yeah. uh, I can appreciate even if it's not beautiful to me. There's some pieces in my art collection that are like very abstract and like a black and white kind of torn paper done like in a gorgeous gold frame. And I thought of my friends like in New Orleans or Dallas who were doing design and I think I have a point, I'll get to it eventually. But, you know, I was thinking about, you know, like, like you know, Ashan Smith in New Orleans or, you know, or, or, you know, Jan Summers in Dallas, like doing a kind yeah. of a classic interior, like, you know, lots of white linen and antiques. And then this like, you know, contemporary art in the gold frame. Hopefully they'll buy mine. I don't know. But <laughs> I guess uh, I kind of like that idea of something. I actually don't mind traditional, kind of updated. Yeah. And then like a really contemporary piece of art. Uh, kind of like you said, something interesting and show-stopping. So 
I do like that. What makes interior, so I actually, I don't know that I'm as colorful in my personal life as everyone might think our designs are. Yeah. And I think we're kind of known for color, but if you really look, I think, at I our work, like there's like a lot, lot of white, there's a lot, lot of black, white, a lot of neutral. things, right, and yeah. then it's pops of color. Like it's a pop pops of color. of color. And I think that Palm Springs is even, you know, like, like, like anything that's popular can almost become a cliche of itself. And so for me, at least, in Palm Springs, what I'm doing now and doing next, because I've been here for 15 years, and now people know my work, and they're even, yeah. you know, like I get emails saying, oh, you know, we were inspired by you, but, you know, we did this house, and it's like, you, or you hired someone else, but you are inspiration, yeah. and I'm like, and then I look at it, and I'm like, is that what you think my work looks <laughs> like? <laughs> okay, so I have a question for anyway, you. Anyway, I'm, I I'm honored either way, but so I, I guess I'm trying to think of like, what's next, and what, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. What's beautiful now? Like, how do we do Palm Springs I, now? I, no, I, have, I have a question for you. And it's a good question because, like, you're in your showroom and there's a lot of things there. What's the one interior item you could not live without? Is there something that you feel is kind of like a, like you must have? Uh, a dog. A dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then someone's oh, saying, well, what brings me joy in my look, look, watch your, look. Oh, oh, my gosh. Totally sacked out. Oh, wow. They are like on the edge of their seat, Tom. We're so interesting. They I just know. can't even like, get enough of us. What like, brings me joy in my surroundings? So, so someone's asking, same kind of, kind of same thing. Uh, what brings me joy? What can I live without? I guess I can't live without like a really big, like comfortable sofa. In my world, it's like, you know, very clean line. That's where I want it deep. I want it like down filled and like, you know, a durable fabric, white, light gray. Like it's just a super deep uh, comfortable sofa for reading and lounging or TV, especially these days, you know, I want like some velvet and silk, you know, um, toss yeah. pillows, like in a, like, um, in like, a, you know, a bold ECOT kind of, you know, modern geometric, um, some modern art, uh, my needs are simple and few, yeah. you know, what can I say? <laughs> I'm simple really and fabulous. Needs are simple. Simple. I, you know, I want a bar cart nearby. And, yes. uh, <laughs> I, I, I basically drag one with me wherever I go. Um, so this is my last question for you. All right. What is the most important room in the house to Christopher Kennedy? Important room in the house. Like, or that you like to decorate? Like you're, I, like, should have, I should have this answer. I'm a decorator. No. I'm good at my job. They're all important. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm a Gemini. We don't like to choose, Tom. We're both <laughs> ants. So I'm going to choose two. Don't ask a Gemini to choose like their favorite. We can't. Like our can literally is like I'm itching trying to choose just one. Uh, I like to design. Ironically, I like to design kitchens, but I don't like to use them. Isn't that funny? <laughs> now, now uh, so <laughs> not even now. Like you're not cooking now. My husband's cooking now. Yeah. Are you a sous chef? Are you helping? Or are you doing cleanup? Yeah. What's your job? Nothing zero. None of the above. Yeah. None of the above. Oh, see, we're. I, so I have a house guest, which by the way, at some point I have to introduce my house guest Ernesto um, to everybody because I always talk about him, but he's like working in the guest house during the day. But anyway, so at night we're like cooking and drinking, you know, having a glass of wine and like cooking and cleaning. And it's like a whole thing. And it's like the dogs are like waiting. They're like floor sharks waiting for something. Yeah. To um, but anyway, so that's kind of what we're up to. Well, first of all, I want to just thank you, Christopher, for... Um, coming and being a part of coming out and being a part of house calls. And, Thank you, Tom. Yeah, and inviting us into your fabulous store in Palm Springs, and um, it was really fun. This was awesome. Thank you. Um, Always fun with you, Tom. Thank and you. thanks. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us um, and coming out and being a part of house calls. Um, tomorrow, I will be doing house calls in conjunction with Fab from the Farm with Carson from 12.30 to 1.30. And then from 1.30 to 2.30, we're doing design chances um, with me. And where that's where um, people are sending in photographs with specific questions for cool. issues and things that they're doing at home. And then I'm helping them make these decisions so that they can take a chance on design. And you can send your photographs and any of your information to media at tomfelicia.com. Um, and that's it. So thanks, everybody. Have a great Thursday. Um, love you, Christopher. Send a big hello to David. Stay healthy Likewise. and well. 
And um, I look forward to seeing your website. This was so okay. much fun. Okay. Talk soon, guys. Big Thanks, kiss. everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you tomorrow at 1 o'clock.